All right. What's up, guys? I'm here with uh, Talon Maples of Houston Dynamo 2, ex-SMU player. He was uh, drafted to the uh, MLS next to uh, Toronto, correct, at first? It, it was Toronto, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, he was in the uh, MLS next best 11 last year with the Dynamo 2, captaining them in pretty much every game, right? Yeah. Very impressive, very impressive. Nice. All right, so... Uh, Let's talk about your uh, your soccer upbringing. So, uh, firstly, uh, what was growing up in? Uh, so you said you started in San Antonio, then you moved to Leander and Georgetown. So, what was growing up playing soccer there like? Uh, it was good, man. I mean, I feel like San Antonio, at least when I was there, like soccer was decently big. You know, I think there's more of like a when I was growing up, like more of like a Mexican culture to it. So, of course, there's going to be a lot of more soccer teams. Um, but it was good, man. It was a good level. Uh, I mean, at that age, like I was just playing to play. Like I just loved playing, and I played other sports growing up. Um, and then was I in middle school in San Antonio? Yeah, I, I was in middle school until. Oh, sorry, I was in San Antonio until my freshman year of high school. Then I moved to Austin in like Georgetown area, Leander. Um, and yeah, that's when like I was always playing soccer, but I was playing other sports in middle school, like running track, playing football, playing basketball. But, like, I was always playing soccer on the side. And then when I came to high school, I was like, okay, this is what I want to do. Like, I've always known I want to be a professional soccer player, but I'm actually just going to stop doing everything else and just solely play soccer. Um, and when I came to Austin, I think that there was just a bigger pool of players in Austin. And so there's, like, better competition, um, better exposure, and just, like, a, a better environment to be in to grow. I felt as if, like, in San Antonio, there's good players, but not many players are looking to go play in college, nice play level. pro. Yeah. yeah, like everybody's just playing, you know, and they're great players, but it's, you know, at some point you just become average, you know, if you're not really wanting to do something else with it. Um, and so, yeah, when I came to Austin, really helped my development a lot uh, because of the style of play and because also my coach, Ron Denny, at the time just kind of was like, dude, you know, we have a lot of good players here. We want you to be the main guy. You know, you need to work on this and this and this. So it just gave me a really good uh, like foundation to kind of just continue to keep working. And, and he really gave me a good system to play into and um, gave me a lot of good opportunities. So it was, I, I personally really think that moving here helped me out a lot or moving to Austin helped me out a lot. Um, but my dad was in the military. And so we moved over to Italy when I was in elementary school and I played over in Italy for three and a half years. And Dang. so that was like a super fun um, experience and it also like I said it helped me out a bunch like I was just you know what I mean around people who were wanting to do that since they were like five so yeah it was cool. and that's that's awesome yeah all Sorry. right thank you and um yeah so you played there and um so once you were playing in Lone Star what did your uh college like recruiting process look like I know at, at one point you were you were looking at going overseas I remember you you were at like Wolfsburg right uh, I went to Hanover. I went Hanover. to Hanover 96. Yeah. And then I went to, I, I originally went to Braunschweig. So when I came over to Austin, I played with Georgetown Forest. And then when I was 16, I went and played in Mexico for a little bit. And then I came back, played here. And then I went back to Mexico when I was 17. And then I had the opportunity to stay there, to play there for however long the contract was going to be. Um, but we had recently just got a call from an agent saying that, oh, well, I'm already out of SMU, so they can't really get me in trouble. But we had recently got a call from an agent saying um, that they had a trial for me overseas in Germany. And so I decided to not sign with the team in Mexico and go give it a shot overseas. And uh, I was just turned 18 and went and trialed for a team called Braunschweig. It was in the Bundesliga 2. Um when I first went over there and traveled with like another team over there, but they really just wanted me to stay at Braunschweig. It ended up not working out. And then I came back and then they took me back like two weeks later to Hanover 96, played really well there um, and couldn't get my work visa in time for the transfer window. So I ended up not being able to sign there. Um, but then I also came back and went back to Mexico again um, for one last time. And man, I had, I had the opportunity to stay there and it just didn't feel right. It just didn't feel like this is a place that I needed to be. And I've never felt that place. Like, I've never felt that anywhere. You know what I mean? Every time I'm going somewhere to play soccer, I'm like, dude, this is where I need to be. This is where I need to stay, whatever, whatever. Like, I was so comfortable. And 
when I went to this place in Mexico, like I was just not comfortable. I was playing well, but off the field and, and so many other aspects that you know about, you know what I mean? Like there's so many other things that go into soccer besides just playing. Um, just wasn't, just wasn't adding up. And so I just kind of called my parents and I was like, man, I, I just think I need to go home. And, and at that point, like we hadn't really much have done anything for colleges. Like they had all reached out to us cause I was playing with Lone Star and I had also did some decent sized tournaments with, uh, with uh, Georgetown Forest and so we had been reached out by a, a decent amount of colleges and me and my family which we were very grateful for but we were kind of saying like that's kind of our plan b like if anything else fails okay let's just go to college you know I can go to college and we're extremely grateful for that we're not sitting here saying that like oh it was a plan b you know like I loved my experience at SMU and and how they treated me and I think it was if I didn't go to SMU I wouldn't be the player or the person that I mainly am today well wow. That was a, that was a great answer. I I didn't know you played at uh, at all those places. That's really cool. Yeah, no, yeah. I appreciate. You've gotten to see like all the systems pretty much. You've gotten to see a little bit of like Central America, Europe. Man, that's that's awesome. Yeah. Very few people yeah. in the U.S. have that. Yeah, man. I kind of forget about it until somebody asks me. So, um, right. yeah, it's nice. And um, talking about your college experience a little bit, um. So what what did you uh, major in while you were at SMU? So I originally went to major in communications because I wanted to be a commentator. I still want to be a commentator. Really? But I yeah, I wanted to be a commentator. But then one of the classes, this is kind of bad, but one of the classes was gonna take twenty minutes away from my training. Like we had like a practice, and they're like, "Yeah, you're gonna have to leave like twenty minutes early." And I was like, "Yeah, I'll just switch majors." And so wow. I just ended up like <laughs> switching to applied physiology and sport management. Huh. Um, and so I studied that and it was just a very, it was a good major and I can do whatever I want within in terms of sports. I can, you know what I mean? Work front office. I can work GM. I can work agent. I don't want to be an agent, but just naming things, you know what I mean? That I can go into with the major. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was very easy because it dealt with sports. And so I like was always interested. The classes were nice and fun. Um, and as you know, being in a college and, and like being able to play a sport, like it, they set you up for success. You know, like you're not like, like, yeah, it's a full time job. Okay. And like, we can all get over that. You know what I mean? Like, we've all worked hard to get where we're at, you know, but like the amount of resources that they give us is, you know what I mean? Like, you, if you're failing, you're trying to fail, you know? Exactly. Yeah. I I definitely feel that like SMU is like a somewhat smaller school, same with Trinity. Like, it's pretty hard to hide sometimes. Like, if you're not doing well, people know. That's what I'm saying. And they're, and they're going to find a way to like help you out. It's not just like, Hey, you're, you're not doing well, figure it out. It's like, Hey, yeah. we have tutors, we have counselors, we have everything, you know, you have to take advantage of it. So. Exactly. Yeah. I, yeah. I appreciated my, I appreciated my academic experience more than I thought I would. So it was nice. Cause I, like I just said, I never really was planning on going to college. Wow. Man, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so uh, leaving SMU, like once you left, what was your like MLS draft process looking like? Dude, it was, it was a, uh, it was definitely a tough time. I think, which kind of like is weird because like, oh, you got drafted and this and that. But I mean, my senior year just got canceled due to COVID, mm. and I just came off of my junior year where I tore my ACL, and so I'd only played nine games by my junior year. Then I tore my ACL, so I was out for that whole season. Then oh, I wow. finally recover and make it back for my senior year and I'm ready to play like I'm just like dude let's go you know what I mean like let's just get the season going I have one more year I can ball out I get drafted and then my senior year ends up getting canceled and I'm like well I don't know what to do and you know they have that COVID year as you know where you can just take another a year and stay there and and play for a little bit longer and and I kind of just took a risk and I just said no like I don't I don't want to stay here for much longer I you know I'm going to get I'm going to be a little bit older than I want to be coming out and that's not the plan uh, I'm going to take a risk and go into the draft and I'm going to see, you know what I mean? Because I've been reached out by a few agents just saying like your draft number is really high. You know, we just want to reach out. Da, 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 da. And so I ended up getting invited to the college combine, um, which was nice, but just like kind of hectic there. Like my roommate at the combine got COVID. So I ended up missing a game. It was just so much, man. And, and so I ended up being able to play two games, which was nice. Um, And then the draft is coming up, dude. And there's so many like mock drafts coming out and everyone's saying like, okay, town's going 14, town's going 16, town's going 12, like all these high numbers. And so we're like, dude, we're going to have a party here. You know what I mean? This and that. And man, like numbers just kept going. 
rounds kept getting called and my name was never mentioned. And so I'm just like sitting there and my agent's calling me and he's like, are you all right? And I'm like, I mean, I don't know what's going on. Like you told me that I was going to go in the top 20 and now I'm not even in the first round and I'm getting halfway through the second round. Nobody's called my name, you know, like what's going on. And the third round comes around and next thing you know, Toronto finally calls my name. And, and I was just like, we were very, at that moment I was grateful, but I was also extremely, extremely, um, motivated and frustrated because I had been told so many things by so many teams and none of them came through. And so I was just, um, I'm very grateful for that day. And my family is very grateful for that day as well. Hey, sorry, my dog just walked in. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I look back at that day as a day of like, all right, like everybody passed up on me because of the fact that I had come off an injury and nobody had seen me play besides a combine. So they didn't even know if I was healthy still. Um, and so, it was, it was good though, man. Like I, I, I now look back on it and, and I'm a little bit more grateful than I was before because not, not everybody gets drafted. You know what I mean? And not everybody gets that opportunity to, to celebrate with your family of being drafted and having your name called. Um, so I'm very, very grateful for that day. It just didn't go as planned or what was said. So yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's a long answer to it. No, no, you're good. I, I didn't know that story. That's, that's interesting. Wow. Yeah. I bet that was like the longest like hour or two of your life. Just dude, it was it was the worst, man. I literally just put my phone down because like that's how they do it. They they like they call your name and you get a call from the GM, you get a call from the coach, all these things, and and they tell you like okay, you're leaving in two days, so like have all your stuff packed, you know, because we have preseason in this place or we have we got to go here, you have to go do media or whatever. And man, I just like tossed my phone on the table. I remember it so clearly. I tossed my phone on the table and I was like, man, I was just so like just tired of it you know I was so tired of like looking to see if my name was getting called looking to see this and I was like man like none of these guys want to take a, like take a risk on me and so yeah. yeah yeah it was it was good though man it was good all right and uh so like post draft so once you got like to so you got you got to Toronto first so once you got there what was the main difference you saw between like the collegiate level and the professional level Dude, I think I went to a team in Toronto who would have, like, star players. You know, like, I'm going to train with Omar Gonzalez, Michael Bradley, Josie Altidore, Alejandro Pozuelo, like, Jonathan Osario, Richie Larea, like, all these men. And then, like, Josef Soldoldo. Like, these guys are huge players. You know what I mean? Like, these guys yeah. are big name players everywhere. Like, I mean, kind of side story. But, like, Soldoldo, we were walking out of training, and he gets a call from Ronaldinho. Anybody just gets like a FaceTime call from him because he was the number 10 at Santos and he just acts up. He just like answers and he's like, what's up? And like, I just get to say hi to him. And then like two weeks later, he gets a call from Neymar. And I'm like, dude, this guy is like, you, you, like those types of players, you know? Yeah. So I, I come in this, this, this lineup and I'm like, man, like this is the first time I've actually like re truly trained with the team post like ACL surgery. And so like, I'm all in my head, you know what I mean? Like, dude, I gotta be doing well. I gotta be doing this. And, I come into a team who's struggling on confidence. So they're kind of trying to take everybody else's confidence away as we're coming in. And I come into a team where it's a new coach. And so everybody's trying to figure out how this is going to work, if it's even going to work and this and that. And new coach was Chris Armas, a great coach, a great guy, just the wrong team. Um, he had a very high pressing system. And like at SMU, like we pressed, but we didn't press like this guy pressed, you know, like this was like running 90 minutes straight high press. And so, it was different in terms of that. It was different in terms of like, no, you need to be pressing super high. No, you need to be really close to people. Like there was no safety net. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I really appreciated that because I love that. You know what I mean? Like you have to take risks to play. Yeah. Um, and so that's what it was like going there. It was definitely tough, man, though. Like, like I said, I was straight out of ACL surgery. Not straight out. That's very false. But like first ever like hard training. You know what I mean? Like with a team post ACL surgery and I was just like in my head and I'm just like trying to gain my confidence back, you know, playing against these good players, trying to do these things. And it was tough, but I, I'm super grateful for it because man, they, they definitely like taught me tough skin, keep running. Don't ask questions. You're not who you think you are. And I was like, oh, okay. So I just got to, you know, focus up, but um, it was good, man. I love the city of Toronto. I love the organization. The organization was great. It was very like high quality organization, um, high quality players and stuff like that. And just be able to share the field with a lot of these guys and train with them every almost every day of the year. Um, 
was really, really nice. That's great. Yeah. Uh, it's Canada is not really known for its soccer, but that sounds like pretty, pretty cool. It, like the it, whole city of Toronto. Their fans love, like love Toronto FC. Huh. It was crazy. We'd had, I, sorry, I know we're going over time, but like oh, we had good. a scrimmage. We had like a inner squad scrimmage at the stadium mm -hmm. and they allowed fans to come in. And I, I was, I trained with the first team almost every day of the season. Like I was just with them. I would, I played games with the second team, but I trained with the first team almost every day. Um, and we had that inner squad scrimmage in the fan. It was like kind of open fans. And I was like, all right, like we'll maybe have like 50. You know what I mean? Like maybe 50. It's the middle of the day. Like it's like a Wednesday. <laughs> Dude, this place, man, they had so many fans there. They had flares. They had banners. They had no scarves <laughs> everywhere. And I freaking get scored on by Josie Outdoor. I remember and he goes <laughs> to the and they pop the flares, start banging the drums. I'm like, well, there goes mine. You know, my <laughs> there goes my my introduction there. My unofficial um, debut. Thing. Yeah, dude, but it was, <laughs> they're such a great soccer city. It's a lot of fun. But they're also very harsh. Like, it's like a typical, it's like a mix between Europe and America, I always say. Like, they're <laughs> very, very harsh on their players, very, very harsh on the organization if they're not playing well. Interesting. Yeah. That's good to know. And um, segueing from there to, like, the American soccer infra infrastructure. So, like, when we played, it was DA. And, like, right when I graduated high school, it turned to... I think it's like MLS Next, which I think yeah. that's what we got right now. And I know that it's not available in, in every city. And then versus you look at Europe, pretty much every single city, town, they either have they ha they have a team. They have a high level team, and that high level team usually has a youth team. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to to ask you about what you thought of the American soccer infrastructure like growing up. Like, did you think you had the right opportunities? Did you think the competition was like adequate and then comparing it like to Europe. Yeah, dude, that's such, that's such a good point. I actually did a study on this exact same thing in college. Oh. Um, and my, my point, I'm going to say my point in the paper and then I'll tell you like my opinion about it. My point in the paper was that there need to be more teams in the U S that like, there's too many cities. There's too many States that don't have a high level soccer team there that like kids can look up to that kids can see that kids can see a pathway to, you know what I mean? Like there's just not that many. Um, now granted we're a huge country, so it's hard. And like, especially in like the, like the, the, like the North, you know what I mean? All those cold States and stuff like that. It's hard. I get it, yeah. but you can make it happen. Um, especially if we're trying to get all of our, all of our like best players to play, you need that because I mean, a great player who's looking for a team and, I don't know, North Dakota. You know what I mean? Like he's looking yeah. he's like, what do I got to go from here? You know what I mean? I got to travel to a whole other state to get to a good level, you know? And it's like, well, is it worth it? Uh, I don't know. Instead of being able to see it so close. My, my opinion, dude, in terms of if I had those opportunities, I would say no. Like when I was growing up, I don't, I don't think I'd have half the opportunities that these guys have nowadays, which is great. That means it's growing, you know, but yeah. man, like, like I'll give you an example. We go to a, we when I played DA and you would go to like the winter showcase is what they called it remember and Man, we used to, yeah we used to play and there what at my games I think I had like around 50 college coaches every time at the games right which is great man that's you know, we're all trying to make it to college we're all trying to do something yeah. nowadays you go to these tournaments and there's maybe three college coaches but there's around 100 professional scouts and like 200 agents you know what I mean? Like that's like now they're all looking at the younger, like the youth players because they're good enough and because they understand that now European teams are looking for young American players because some American, Christian Pulisic, Weston McKinney, Tyler Adams, Brennan Aronson, um, who else am I forgetting? Gio Reyna, like all these guys, you know what I mean? Like they've made it over there. They've made a name for the Americans. And so now they're like, oh, we'll just get some young American guys, Chris Richards, all these guys, you know what I mean? Like yeah. we'll get some young American guys and if it works out, it works out. If it's not, sorry, we'll treat you the same way we treat the Europeans that don't make it here, you know, but no, we don't, man, me and my trainer talk about it all the time and the opportunities that these kids have nowadays, we would have begged for, like how I got overseas was like the luck of the draw, you know, like I'm literally playing DA and some guy shows up who helped out Mackenzie Gaines get to Wolfsburg and he sees me play a game. He's like, oh, okay, this kid's kind of decent. Then he keeps watching me and keeps watching me. He's like, all right, let's see if they need a spot somewhere. And the next thing you know, we're over in Germany. But that's like a one, you know what I mean? People would yeah. kill to have that opportunity compared to now. 
you go to a tournament, you know for a fact there's going to be European scouts there. So you right. have a couple games, you know that there's at least an opportunity for you to be seen by European scouts, you know. Um, so it's, it's definitely growing for sure. And the amount of MLS teams that are trying to invest in the youth is good. Um, they are doing it. Some teams are doing it in a different way than others. I know, for instance, like Houston does it to where they'll sign a young guy and when he's 16. So they'll sign him, right? An MLS contract when he's 16, but they'll sign him for only two years. And because when he turns 18, you can go play overseas, right? So they're signing for, for when he was 16 so that during every offseason, he goes to England. And he goes and trains in England and trials for West Ham, trials for Burnley, trials for all these English clubs so that they keep tabs on him. And then when he gets 17, he plays in the MLS. He plays a couple games in the MLS, so they raise his stock. And yeah. then by 18, they can sell him for a bunch of money for a mm -hmm. kid that's just – he's a good player. He's just a young, good player. We trained him, but we got him on a lot of a lot of people's eyes, you know. And so it's – the MLS is definitely moving towards – a place where they're starting to invest more in the youth because they understand that European teams are now looking at our youth. If yeah. That makes sense. Little by little, like we're starting to become a development league. Like you see like Paxton Aronson just went over to, I think it was Salzburg or no yeah. Leipzig, Leipzig and um, other American players, like younger players going overseas, like a pretty young age. There's a guy from FC Dallas who left. Uh, Pepe. Yeah. There is another guy too, outside back. Um, Johan's. Oh, brother. Who's, which one? Johan Gomez. He's a little brother. I forgot. His last oh, name. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like a left back. But they're just a lot of a lot of good players going over, which is great. Like it's good to yeah. see our next generation. Like it's gonna it's gonna be kick ass. Dude, it's gonna be nice, man. I just I hope, like I said, I hope that the MLS teams are willing to just take risk. You know what I mean? And willing to actually do that. And man, I mean, I'm kind of on a different note, but it used to be like Liga and Mekis, the Mexican league used to be miles better than the MLS. But yeah. now you look at it, and I'm like, I think the MLS is way better than Liga Mekis. Like, just I watch, I watch both games. You know what I mean? I'm not biased towards one or the other, but yeah. I watch both. Games. And dude, the MLS level now is way, way higher than what it used to be. And I don't think Liga Mekis has developed as much as the MLS has in the past six, seven years. You know? Yeah, I I completely agree with that. I think it's kind of stayed the same for like five, six years. The same exactly. players are there; they're still dominating. But the MLS feels like it changes every year now, which is good. Yeah. And um, one question just to wrap everything up. Um, this is obviously a what if, so you can think about it. But if you could redo your process and become like a professional player instead of going through college, would you do that? Or would you like continue to go through that SMU path that you went? I know it's a tough question. Yeah, dude, that's a very tough question because I'll answer, I'll answer it in two ways. Um, in terms of playing, in terms of like uh, soccer development, you know, technique, uh, tactical, physical, all those things, um, I would have much preferred to have gone pro before college. I would have much preferred to go overseas, make it overseas, work my way from there, or even go to an MLS academy. You know what I mean? So many of these teams are like, dude, if you would have came to the academy, we could have already signed you to a homegrown when you were 17. You know, and it's like, oh, okay, whatever. That's a big what if. But I think I would have done that because I would have developed more. I'm not saying SMU developed me. I think SMU developed me in a very unique way. But on a different note, on a personal level, I would always go back to college. Not because, like, oh, I was just partying up and this and that. No, like, I that's not even nowhere near what it is. It was, like, I learned so much about, like, myself and so much about, like, important relationships and, like, my faith and stuff like that. Like, that was something that grew immensely in my college career that, like, I would never trade. So, like, overall, if you ask me, like, if you ask me that and just said overall, soccer included, but everything else, I would say I, w I wouldn't trade it. I would go back to college because of how much um, benefits I got through like relationally and, and my faith wise and, and personally and, and just everything, you know, but and if you just ask for soccer standpoint, then I would say, no, I would go pro. Does that make sense? That's, a, that's yeah, a that long that absolutely makes sense. That's a very, yeah, I get that. I totally get that answer. That's very, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's it though. That's all I got. Did you have any more questions? 
Uh, no, that's all I have, man. Thank you. Thank you again for your time. I think you answered like every question perfectly. I think this is this is good. It's a good place to start. I, I can definitely tell you've written like an essay about it. You, Dude, you've done so and much. You've, you've been through it. Like you've been through the system. You know what's up. So I, that's yeah. why I thought you were like the perfect person to talk to about this. So. Uh, dude, I appreciate you giving me a call, dude. If you need anything else, man, like anything, not even involving this or whatever, just dude, don't hesitate to call me. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. All right, my man. All hey, right, well, have a good weekend. Hopefully the project goes well. Have good finals too. Good luck. Appreciate it, bro. Thank you very much. Bye.